Okay, Sean, welcome in the show. Uh, I will give the word to uh, Wim. Wim is uh, much handsomer and uh, speaks better English than me. So uh, he can do the interview with you. Good luck. Thank you. Sean, good morning. Mm. How are you? And where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm at home at the moment. Not yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Wish I was out on the water because the weather looks better than it did uh, the days before. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some kind of food poisoning or something. So, uh, oh, yeah, but you look, it yeah. sounds a bit rubbish, but you look rubbish, really, <laughs> as if you are really tired. Yeah, okay. For the three people in our world who do not know you, who's Sean Witt? Why? Uh, Witt? Yeah, Sean Witt. I uh, live in the Netherlands, uh, usually participate in. Uh, a bunch of tournaments throughout the year, including mm -hmm. the tour in the Netherlands and Sweden. Yeah. Fortunately, through the entire situation globally, uh, you know, we're unable to attend during these big events. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that's me as an angler. I'm a fanatic pike angler. I'm not that skilled in fishing for perch and zander, which is always an issue during these mm -hmm. big tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So and and then at the same time, I do multiple stuff for several brands. I work for a Dutch company called Technautic, which is the distributor of yeah. uh, Minkoda. Uh, Hummingbird and also Rebels Help. Yeah. And I do stuff for several lure companies and clothing brands and stuff. But, uh, okay. Yeah. And doing yeah. well. Uh, I know from experience you've got a podcast as well. Yeah. I listen to that once in a while. And good. I think that's going, going really good. Tell me more about your connection to the Predator Tour. Yeah. We, um, I think the first Predator Tour that I participated in was 2017 in um, the, the Swedish Predator Tour, mm -hmm. uh, um, which was a new event for us. We fished smaller tournaments back in the days, but um, yeah, the Predator Tour itself, uh, it was always something we, we, we aimed to you know, yeah. participate in. We're always not that much of uh, competition anglers and stuff, but we thought just let's just give it a go, especially the Predator Tour in 2017 in Sweden was a... Uh, uh, the, the, for us, easier to compete in because it was in Sweden and it was highly focused on pike. You do need to, yeah, and pike. kind of your home water, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, and also the uh, the but but the, it was perch as well that year that need to be included, uh, and also a trout if you really wanted to uh, to, to get lucky. That mm -hmm. nobody caught a trout during that event. Um, the perch turned out to be the, the main issue for the, for most of the guys. Yeah. But in 2018, the uh, the Predator Tour, well, we got the hang of it. I mean, in 2017, yeah. we were really happy with it. We got fourth place, and we thought, you know, just fuck it, let's yeah, just let's do it do again. The Dutch yeah. Version as well. Yeah. Um, so we participated in 2018 in the uh, Swedish Predator Tour. Mm -hmm. Had an amazing run on first day. Uh, I think we caught over eight fish over 100 centimeters. Had a had a good lead, but at the same time we knew that fishing on a lake like that, um, you know, if you have such good results that the fishing is on, some other team can come along the next day and do the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows the trick. Yeah. 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 So that kind of happened the day after. It was a Danish team that uh, overtook us halfway through the second day and then we had a great comeback with a one meter 13 pike and a one meter 22. yeah back at the leaderboard and then on day three we i don't know it, it, it felt like we had it in the pocket some way but at the same time with the knowledge you had from the day before that people could overtake you again yeah uh, we chose the wrong side of the lake because the uh, opposite side of the lake was had way more wind, so the conditions were way better over there. And we were just sitting in a dead calm, sunny, no windy, no activity at all. <laughs> yeah, and we're just sitting there. And like after a couple of hours, we, you know, the 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 uh, the, 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 the nerves starting to get to you because you are tempted to look at your phone instead of doing yeah, the fishing, fishing, and then you're not getting any activity at all. So. Uh, at some point we were checking our phones more often than we were doing casts so we we're like okay just we need to stop this we gotta yeah. put our phones away put it in the yeah. hatch cast away the telephone start fishing again yeah yeah yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 so that was uh we put it away and then in the most dead calm conditions like half an hour on the clock i managed to catch a one meter 17 which was like a four centimeter upgrade i think and then we knew it that it would be nearly impossible to beat us instead of if, if a team caught like two fish over one minute 20 in the last 30 minutes which on van is nearly impossible 
Um, so yeah, the, 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 that was in the pocket. And then we went to the Netherlands and like, yeah, well, yeah. The, the, we gonna fish on, on Haring Street and on, um, on Holland's Deep, which mm. was a lake we never fished before. So. Yeah, you didn't know the, the lakes before. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Very no. new. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we, we did fish for Xander sometimes, but it was usually vertical fishing. Um, I never did any casting for Xander and stuff because we're all hardcore pine kangers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and with some intel and some info from some friends, we, uh, we found some spots, but we didn't really catch any on those spots. And then on the first day, we had some decent pike results and not amazing. And there were a lot of teams that already qualified with the, uh, with, with three of each species. So yeah. that was, for us, it was like, okay, you know, it's just, it, it, it will be competing just to see how far we can go. It's fun. And then on the, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. The, the thing we did was like, after the, um, after the first day, when we saw all the results of all the people, we, um, we, we just stayed on the water late and just scouted some spots where we thought, okay, we might need to find this and they're more shallow. Mm -hmm. um, because we did see some people catching Xander on the shallows as well. So we just experimented with some small soft baits and first thing in the morning we went to a big shallow spot, started casting and uh, we caught loads of Xander, all relative small ones, yeah. but it got us the Xander as well. So, so almost uh, comparable to your start on the former Predator Tour, banging yeah. on the first day. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. and. Um, the, the the last in 2019 we had a great run with you know caught a lot of pike good pike as well um good good, good bunch of zander as well on the first day but then the perch the perch has always been an issue for us i mean the uh, zander always, well. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah you it, can tell it, it, the water. Yeah, it shows yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always difficult to perch and uh they can be more erratic than other species it I feels know. to me yeah because on the, the the first time we competed in the Predator Tour on the uh, on the uh, second day at the last half hour we found a, uh, a spot where we had um, I think we caught like seven or eight perch over forty centimeters in like mm -hmm. half an hour and all of a sudden bang you just find them and they're all there and yeah. then and it's all and you can hit the jackpot yeah. but they seem to move and they seem to be active inactive so erratic that you can do all the right things but if you just not there at the right time it can be really yeah. difficult i hate when you're... perch yeah, me too <laughs> no i fish yeah. perch constantly so i know what you're talking about <laughs> i'm really a perch fisherman so i know it's no. erratic they are everywhere or nowhere that's exactly. it really but, that's it but how did you how did you cope with that with learning to fish for perch because when you want to learn for fish it's, it's really you know you need to get that confirmation that you're doing the right thing at some point it's, they're so erratic. it's what you do you know spots and it's you know the the sensitivity of your bait you know it's yeah. so when you fish pike i don't fish with big lure i fish with creature baits uh crawl uh depending on the season of course and if they are there stay there if they are not there move that's it it's constantly moving like a perch you have to move like a perch that's it yeah and it's yeah. for me it's big fun because What's the challenge? I mean, it's a it's daily a, surprise. That's it. Yeah, it's a daily yeah. surprise. And and by the way, you're a really good pike angler. Do you use that in your strategies when you're fishing in the competition? Let's start yeah, with sander. Have... Let's start with perch because I know how to catch a pike. Is that a common way for you? Yeah, but at the same time with the rules, like with three species each, uh, the tournament is relatively pike heavy. Yeah, uh, that's where you can gain the most centimeters. Yeah. Um, we switched it up with um, usually me and my team buddy. One would use uh, smaller crankbaits or smaller lures to, you know, trying to catch anything that's out there. I mean, yeah. small spinnerbaits, for instance, worked really well for us because we could catch perch, we could catch standard, we could catch pike. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy would just hammer the spot with a big bait and yeah. just see if we can selectively pull the big ones out as well. Yeah. Uh, there's another benefit to it as well. But if you do cast big baits for like two or three days in a row, uh, your shoulder just gets completely messed I up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went to a physician to actually help my right arm because I've had some issues uh, after you know a couple of really long sessions in Sweden casting super heavy baits. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, my, it's my, top my, sport. My, it's it's really yeah, it is. my right arm was completely yeah. messed up. I then needed to do like training and to start yeah. mobilizing my arm again. So yeah. that wasn't uh, so 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 taking shifts like one guy's so fishes the small baits. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
good ways that helps out as well. And it, 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 it gives you a bigger window in catching the other species as well. So, yeah. I want to know more about your connection with Rebel Cell. I've, co I've put uh, a Rebel Cell logo. You are connected to Rebel Cell besides Technotic, of course. Yeah. Um, how did that come apart? How did that work out for you? Um, well, it was actually quite in the beginning where almost the entire industry was still using uh, old lead acid batteries. Yeah, um, from the caravan. Yeah. Exactly. Heavy, um, you know, relatively reliable, but at the same time, with cold temperatures, they're quite sensitive. Yeah. Um, at the same time, um, heavy, and you would, you know, dispose them every couple of years because they're not really, especially with deep, uh, deep charge, deep discharging, when you, yeah. you know, drain the battery during a heavy day with a lot of wind, you can do that two, three, maybe four times. Yeah, that, that, that. The lead, yeah. The battery is yeah. completely gone. Nobody's really checking, and you, especially in a lead acid battery, you couldn't really check what the capacity was. So, um, a couple of years ago, I was approached by Rebel Cell by the owner and uh, asked me if I was interested in collaborating and testing out his projects. And mm -hmm. I uh, started working with a 24 volt system because I used, used a Minn Kota um, uh, power drive first, uh, then I switched to a Altera and um, always 24 volts because I'm using a quite a heavy boat yeah. and I was really blown away by the fact that that battery was so light. I started out with 24 volts, 50, tested it out in Sweden, never had any issues with capacity or so. And the thing that stood out for me was the fact that um, with a lead as a battery, the uh, voltage drops down quite fast. And with the lower voltage, you need to increase the. Uh, if you, you would normally like when the battery is full, you could put your in your uh, your electric engine or your trolling engine. You could put it like um, um, you know half throttle or something. You know, mm -hmm. to get to get the power you desire. Yeah. But once the uh, lead acid battery starts to decline and the the uh, the voltage goes down, you need to step it up towards six or seven or eight, and that drains the battery even faster. Yeah. Um, with lithium, that that's way less of a thing. So that that's uh, that was one of the benefits too, and it saved up a lot of weight. And from that on, a uh, collaboration came through where we uh, started out think, thinking about new products in the market, seeing what the demand in the product market is, but yeah. also focusing highly and, on, and, on social and, media. And, and can you influence that with your uh, knowledge? Can you influence a new products? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. That's uh, like, for instance, with the um, um, one of the, the the last components in the in the boat that still that old lead acid technology was the the, the starting battery. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I have been uh, thinking about and talking about a lot as well. That we need to do something with those starting batteries, especially. Um, I came back from an era where you put a big, you know, like a big 100, 105 or even bigger lead acid battery in the back. Uh, when you do a lot of trolling, it's quite easy because the dynamo of your, your petrol engine yeah, will fill it up. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And then it's you know you're you're done, you're sorted. Um, but a lot of guys are using a separate system, especially when you do a lot of casting. For me as well, when I'm out in Sweden and and, and you're casting non-stop, you can't rely on that lead acid battery. You need yeah. a separate battery to yeah. power your sonars, especially with all the big screens coming now. Out yeah, you drain it. Yeah, you drain it. Yeah. yeah. And um, so you see that people were using a battery for their trolling engine and battery for their um, sonar screens. I use a Solix 15, for instance, which takes mm -hmm. a lot of energy. So you need a battery for those. And then you need a battery to start your engine as well, because all the big yeah. engines are all electrically started. So, um, But it was still an old lead acid battery. And I was still using the old lead acid battery that I had, which was like close to 30 kilograms, which was a lot of weight in the boat. Um, and now we developed a, a starting battery that does the exact same thing with a high reliability, because yeah. the lithium that we use isn't that sensitive for, for, for cold weather and stuff. And you can check what the voltage is, which you can normally not do on a um, on a uh, lead acid battery. And it's only one and a half kilograms. Yeah, so I know. I, I use a rebel cell on my belly boat. It's this big. Yeah. It's yeah. a pack of butter. That's it. And yeah, it's really it's cool. So really easy cool. To pack. Really cool. It's, uh, and another part we worked a lot of on is to the, the, the waterproof uh, capability. So uh, with the yeah. outdoor box and stuff, which yeah. is more commonly used in the car fishing industry. But I see a lot of belly boat guys using yeah. it as well. Yeah. yeah. And we now develop one that's completely submergible. So you can just drop it in the water, 
uh, fish in any conditions yeah. and uh, would be crushed for me <laughs> really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for me too, if i will be a belly rock fisher i i wreck a lot of stuff uh yeah i got two left hands sometimes when it comes to uh you know keeping keeping stuff uh, i know uh, yeah i've got uh, no sunglasses anymore <laughs> okay okay um, <laughs> sounds so familiar yeah fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, or on top of the car, or driving away with the boat, and then I had it with guiding a couple of weeks ago. One of my customers <laughs> told me, your sunglasses are gone. Like, yeah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay, what yeah. do you think about the press tour as we are doing it right now, online? It's how we have to do it, but uh, what's your opinion on this, or how do you look at it? And by the oh, way, I'm really happy to have you here, because we yeah. needed live action. What we really miss is live action, because the fishermen are all a bit hesitant to call in yeah and so this is really cool to have, to have you well great to be here and the the, the 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 pleasure is all mine because i you know obviously i would have wanted to fish the tournament and 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 especially the normal tournament that we had like mm -hmm. in june or it was in october i think all of us would have settled for october or even november if it had to be but yeah yeah things the way it's looking now it's the only way we can actually organize a tournament like this and um, i'm really happy that you guys pushed through and that you took the effort to to organize something like this um i think that what you're saying is that a lot of anglers can be a bit hesitant to go live i think the weather conditions that we had um yesterday for instance as well make it a bit difficult too because the wind is just insanely hard sometimes at some lakes which makes it really hard to control a boat to fish and to go live as well mm -hmm. uh, um, th that makes it hard and yeah maybe in the future you can do something with team you know camera guys on board and uh, yeah that's and, uh, yeah that's or just what... drive around and film like you have a couple of marshals on board and just yeah drive by and interview people but i do understand that with the whole condition at the moment the whole pandemic and stuff uh, you have to make do with what you can, and and and, and you're doing. A, you guys are doing a great job, and I'm really happy that you're keeping one. You know, one of the tournaments at least going in in, yeah. in a different way, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, we have to keep it alive. But on the other hand, it's also a very good preparation, maybe for a a, a real life tournament. Exactly. Yeah. On yeah. on on any water, in combination with this. Um, yesterday, at the end of the day, we had a, a evaluation, of course, because the sergeant major wanted to evaluate <laughs> there he is <laughs> and um despite the fact it's the first time it's gone really well because yeah the, the, everything works really well and this is a form of training uh, what we do and we can prepare more and i think it can be a learning for other tournaments as well this is the very first yeah, time exactly. we do this in europe it makes sense this will be combined uh, eventually and uh, makes it really interesting also for the for the sponsors and uh, all the uh, and competitors of course who work for the uh, sponsors yeah we think uh, we're doing uh, quite well I've got a yeah, question well, from you yeah. I've got a question for you from Alex Nee Wells are you planning to release a 36 v1 ah good question good question uh, yeah, well, we get a demand a lot in the market that there are people are looking at a uh, 36 volt system. Um, it's, uh, it's something that we see with the bigger boats that the power uh, that's demanded is getting bigger and better as well. Uh, a lot of people want to have bigger, bigger engines, bigger boats, and also uh, batteries that, can, that that suit them. And I think the current market with all those 36 volt systems are usually where you 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 hook multiple batteries up together. Um, so yeah, that's something we're looking into, definitely. Yeah, and that's also an example of cooperation that you yeah. can influence. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Really good exactly. question. So, yeah, we're open for for suggestions and uh, and 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 any wishes out of, out from the market. You know, we have to see if it's viable. We have to check up the capacity and what's because all the, the 36 volt systems. How big do you need the battery? Uh, you know, what kind of anglers are using it? What kind of types of boats? Yeah. Uh, but we, we we are looking into it and, and any suggestions or any wish from the market are, are, are always welcome so okay good question. you're talking about the market you are a pro let's call it a pro pro staffer how do you see those kind of uh connections with uh, uh because you tell me now and and people you have influence you can influence products product placements etc etc for instance technologic 
great company, great gear. How do you see a cooperation with a company like that? Well, the, 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 um, I think the, um, the 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 name of you know pro staff uh, has been um, it has two different interpretations, I guess. Um, some people can interpret it as per se uh, promotional staff. So people just use products and then they start promoting it, uh, and that's it. That makes you promotional staff, short pro staff. Yeah. Uh, but then you have a different variant as well, which is uh, pro staff as a pressure, someone who uses this in a professional way. Um, I, I, I value the professional collaboration where I'd like to have influence on the products that I'm using. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, with some brands, it's easier than others. The benefit with Rebel Cell that is that it is a Dutch company. It's based in the Netherlands. We're focused on the European yeah. market. That makes it easier to have influence on product development and stuff than, for instance, uh, Minn Kota for because the US market is just way bigger. Yeah. Let's just be honest about that. Um, so it has its benefits of, uh, of, of, of being a, uh, a Dutch or European based company. Um, but I do value the, the collaboration in that way that you can influence, that you can, you know, get uh, feedback from the market and, and mm -hmm. put that into product development. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not only as a possibility to fish a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, it has its benefits, obviously. Uh, I left the, um, uh, the, 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 the corporate world in 2018, just going all in on fishing. Um, I haven't doubted it ever since, but um, yeah, it, 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 you have to work with a lot of brands together. I do some guiding as well, but I would not advise anyone to be fully into guiding at this moment, uh, especially with the pandemic going on. Um, luckily for me, I know that other guys have it rough, so I hope those guys can, back, can get back up on their feet. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they, they, for me, if you want to do, you want to go full all in on, on, on the fishing industry, you have to collaborate and work with brands yeah. together otherwise. Yeah, and, and be really passionate about it. I heard a podcast from you about guiding in Sweden, how yeah. it's, that's really romantic uh, to do, but it's, it's really, yeah. really hard working, really hard working. It is, it is. I, I really respect those guys that are doing it like full swing, you know, day in, day out. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of them that are just out on the water five or six days a week. and uh, Don't eat at home. <laughs> No. You know, you come on, you, you leave early, you come home late. Uh, yeah. You have to be out there in the most shitty conditions out there, especially if yeah. you have international customers. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not an easy job. No, definitely no. not. And you have to shine constantly. Yeah, you have to entertain. You have to learn people's yeah. stuff, and you have to perform at the same time. So yeah. 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 Okay, but shining. What's your future? At not not at the moment because you feel a bit ill, I think, but. <laughs> what are your plans? Yes, food, your food plans. Food poisoning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope it all depends. I think for everyone, I think it all depends on the uh, on the entire you know global situation how it will yeah. turn out, how this will play out. Hopefully, we can fish tournaments in the old style again next year. Maybe we can do a combination of both, like you suggested. Uh, yeah. That, that we have some more online influences. Uh, I think it's it's a good direction. I think either way, um, uh, the, the, the the test case or the experiment that you guys are doing now will help you learn in, in, in putting some elements to oh, use, you bet. even if you go back to the old situation. So yeah, that will be good for me personally. Um, yeah, I'm I am working on a couple of projects. Um, I have one which I can't really tell too much about, but that will probably be a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an international project which involves a lot of content creators. Um, yeah, I will be continuing to do some guiding, but in a, uh, in, in, in a lesser form because I simply do not have the time for it. And yeah, I'm still working with a lot of brands, but uh, I will uh, keep on working with Rebel Cell. I will keep on working with the guys from Technautic, from Hammerberg, Bing Coda. And I will also uh, start picking up my uh, my own content creation stuff in the, in the near cool. future as well. You mentioned the podcast. That's something we're going to re-energize again, but also my own fishing videos. I yeah. So pick it up again, but time has been short uh, these past couple of months. Sounds yeah. really cool. Okay. Do you have any suggestions or messages for the competitors today and uh, tomorrow? Yeah, tight line, um, fish on, bang it. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna gonna give any perch advice because <laughs> I would be the wrong guy to give people perch advice. Yeah. Um, 
I do notice, well, you know, I don't want to add that. I noticed in my fishing over the past couple of weeks that a lot of pike are already schooling around the schools of bait fish. So if you can find mm -hmm. the bait fish, you can already find the pike. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from my experience, I found a lot of fish going between that four to eight meter range, especially yeah. the bigger ones. Yeah, so, uh, a bit deeper. All right. Take, put that to your advantage, guys. The ones who are struggling right. with pike. You so part from the boat in his uh, in his short interview and stuff. And Bart was always. Uh, in, I, will, I will whisper him some secret stuff in his ears. Uh, to okay, <laughs> do that, do that. Hey, thanks a lot. Good to talk to you. Very nice what you've uh, told us. Uh, keep on hammering. Thanks me. And yeah, thanks for having me. And, and good luck with the organization, with the tournament. I will watch thanks. that whole. We're probably going to lie my bed a bit more and just uh, you know follow the other competitors and we'll see how it goes. So uh, thanks a lot for hosting it and thanks for yes. having me on. Yeah, get better. Get better. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sean, have a good day. Bye. Bye. You too, man. Bye. Bye.